first tactic was to find as many as I could. And, uh, you know, it may seem obvious to say, but, uh, but you, you know, I guess you see, I've been taking for granted the fact of email now and just the fact of computers and word processors, right? So, uh, but you know, any play written before 1995, it's unlikely that it was saved on disk, right? So, um, so the first thing was just try to track down how many plays still exist. When I started the process, I knew that there was a number of plays which I absolutely had to find. Uh, and then, and then the rest was more of an exploratory, especially from the 1990s, which I, I wasn't familiar with. I knew there was a lot of plays, like I think 30 new plays were produced at Walterdale during that time, um, 25 or 30 during that time. And so I, I wanted to, I, first I had to search. And once I found the ones that, uh, that I thought were interesting, the first, first criteria for me was quality. They had to be good. They had to be worth reprinting. Um, and, uh, you know, I say in the, in the introduction to this anthology, you know, that uh, there's so many Canadian plays that are forgotten and so many plays at uh, amateur theaters are forgotten. And, you know, I say, well, sometimes it's not such a bad thing. Sometimes the plays weren't all that great to start with. But, uh, but some of them are great and they deserve a, another look. So the first thing was quality for me. I wanted to make sure this is something people would want to read, that they'd be interested, that people could connect to. The second thing was variety. This anthology is unique because um, it's not based around a specific theme. These are plays produced at Walterdale. That's a sort of a fact. But they're not, they don't share similar themes. There are comparisons to be made, which I think are uh, extremely interesting to, th to think about. But uh, basically, I was looking for variety, and that's always been Walterdale's um, sort of hallmark, is uh, in any given season, you'll have a comedy, you'll have maybe have a musical, you'll have new plays, you'll have uh, maybe a history, a drama. And we found, um, during my time, we did a survey here. And uh, we found that uh, across the board that people just have very different interests. And they might not go to an entire season, but they will only see dramas. This is their rule. They only see drama, heavy drama. Some people will only see a comedy. Right? And uh, so I wanted to reflect that sort of variety in the anthology, um, because it's part of the ethos of Walterdale, I think. So, um, so I try to get sort of a one of each, as much as that sort of a, a philosophy could come about. Um, I was also interested in who the playwrights were. And so a variety of quote unquote career positions is represented here. So uh, I mentioned you know, Brad Fraser, for example. Uh, it was sort of that story of starting out here and then becoming internationally well known as a playwright and a, and a, and a TV and a film writer. I wanted to absolutely get a, a chronological span. So it had to represent um, as much of the 50 years as possible. So uh, the earliest play in this collection is uh, 1967, and it's um, Wilford Watson's The Canadian Fact. Also plays that had a story to tell, you know, that there is something that I could write a, a kind of a meaty introduction to for each one, and this is important for me as well, where um, I know a lot of anthologies will just say a little bit, there'll be some biographical information, maybe a brief plot um, summary of the play, but here I thought that there was a great way to tell Walter Dale's story um, from the point of view specifically of, of, uh, of new plays. And, uh, and to be able to do that almost in, um, I was talking to someone today that you can almost read this anthology from cover to cover. I don't know how many people do that. <laughs> I don't know how many people read anthologies from cover to cover, but you can almost do that with this because um, you get snippets and in each introduction, there's parts that refer back to other introductions in the anthology and back to the general introduction at the beginning. So um, it was important for me, I think, to make, make those, some of the tie-ins clear. Um, but as well, you know, you kind of leave it with an open-endedness because you don't want to drive the reader into one direction. You want to make sure that they have something of, a, of an open mind going into it. But there's just enough there to give them sort of an interesting tidbits to pull something out of the play, each play that's interesting.